In the activity that you performed today, you created a handheld simple microscope and observed the fungus that grew on a piece of bread. This microscope is a great tool to observe the finer details of a lot of things, both living and non-living. The structure that you saw today is the typical of these organisms. This simple experiment has unfolded very important fundamentals of food preservation too. We will now discuss the various concepts of biology that are a direct interpretation of this simple experiment. All the items that we use today are easily available in and around the household. By using glass beads of different sizes, you will be able to see a differently zoomed image. Please remember to be very careful while handling the mouldy bread and make sure that it doesn't touch any part of your body. Wear gloves wherever possible and wash hands thoroughly after handling the mould. After completing this activity at school, under the supervision of your teacher, or at home with the instructions mentioned in the accompanying activity guide, you would have seen the magnified structure of the black fungus that grew on the bread. This fungus is commonly known as the black bread mould, and is commonly seen on bread that is old or that has not been stored properly. You must have observed that the fungus and thread-like structures with a spherical head much like a tadpole. Different fungi have different structures and it is possible to visualize many of them with a simple microscope. Do you know that mushrooms are also a kind of fungus? Did you observe moulds of any other colour on the piece of bread you used for this activity? If yes, you should check the structure of those moulds with your microscope. Do you see a different structure? Another simple variation of this experiment is to expose the bread slices to different conditions and compare the rate at which fungus grows on them. Some conditions you may try are keeping one slice at room temperature and the other in the refrigerator, covering one slice of bread and leaving the other slice exposed to air, moistening one slice of bread with water and keeping the other slice dry, heating one slice of bread on a flat pan till it becomes golden brown on both sides and using the other slice without any heating. With these variations of the experiment, you will understand how different storage conditions affect the growth of fungus on bread. An understanding of this concept is the basis of food preservation. By knowing how to slow down food spoilage, we can store the food safely for a longer period of time. Another thing you could try is varying the distance between the slide and the bead and observe the image now. Does the distance between the object and the bead have any effect on the image? What would happen if you use a bigger bead to make the simple microscope? Fungi are organisms that are very different from plants and animals. Unlike plants, they cannot synthesize their own food. This is why they grow on other organisms, known as their host that provide them food and nourishment, or on food items to absorb nutrients directly. For this purpose, they release enzymes and toxic compounds that break down complex chemicals into smaller ones which are more readily absorbed. But in the process, they spoil the food and cause diseases in their hosts. This is why fungi are classified as parasites. However, scientists have found out that some fungi synthesize compounds known as antibiotics. These compounds are released for killing other organisms which might compete with the fungus for food and nutrition. Interestingly, antibiotics have been found to work against many bacteria that cause diseases in humans. But how antibiotics were discovered is a very interesting story. A common fungus that grows on bread, much like the black bread mold that you saw today, is penicillium. It produces a blue-green lawn of fuzzy mold on the bread. Dr. Alexander Fleming, a British scientist, was working with a deadly bacterium that was known to cause diseases in humans. When he returned to his lab from a vacation in 1928, he saw that some plates where he had grown the bacterium were contaminated by this blue-green fungus. He was disappointed as his bacteria would have to be grown again, but upon careful examination of the contaminated plates under the microscope, he saw that the area on the plate around the point where the fungus was growing was devoid of any bacteria. 
This is when he realized that the contaminating fungus has secreted some compound that inhibited the growth of the bacteria. This chance discovery changed the course of medicines in the history of mankind and after a few years the purified compound penicillin was extracted from penicillium. Penicillin was a revolutionary compound as it has saved many hundreds of millions of people from deadly bacterial infections. It is one of the most remarkable, important and landmark discoveries in the history of humanity. So, you see how the simple living organisms around us can turn out to have so many medical and industrial applications. This is why we must always observe the simple things that happen around us. If Dr. Fleming had simply discarded the contaminated bacterial plates in 1928, the world would have not got such an important medicine at that point in history. However, it should be noted that all fungi do not produce antibiotics. Some of them produce poisonous substances called toxins that can cause a lot of health problems if consumed. Therefore, if you notice fungal growth on any food item, do not consume it. A microscope is a very important tool for biologists. It is used to visualize highly magnified images of living and non-living things. The structure of the black mold that you saw in the microscope comprised of long thread-like structures with spherical heads. These threads spread through the food substrate, in our experiment the bread, and the spherical heads contain fungal spores that are dispersed in the air for propagation. Some scientific terms. A parasite is an organism that survives and thrives on another host organism and deprives the host of nutrients. Fungi are a distinct kingdom of organisms that grow by decomposing the host or food on which they grow. Mold is fuzzy structures that a fungus produces on decaying food items or organisms. An antibiotic is a compound that inhibits the growth of other microorganisms. Symbiotic relationship is an association between two different organisms that usually have a beneficial effect for both partners. Some theory prerequisites. You need to have a basic idea of terms like lens, microscope, light, focus, image, reflection, refraction, etc. Some idea about ray diagrams. A basic knowledge about the parts of a fungus like hyphae, mycelium, fruiting body, spores and their functions. And simple motor skills like handling biological material with care, using a pair of scissors safely, handling adhesive tapes, etc. Fungi, which is the plural of fungus, are a group of organisms that are distinct from bacteria, plants and animals. The interesting thing about fungi is that they have similarity with all these organisms, yet they are different. Like bacteria, some fungi, like yeast, are microscopic and single-celled. Plants and some fungi have similar subcellular structures. And like animals, fungi are unable to synthesize their own food and depend on either plants or animals for their food requirements. The study of fungi is called mycology, and one needs to use the microscope to visualize their finer structures. Based on their structure, fungi are classified into various subtypes. A very interesting kind of fungi is one that associates with algae, and the two organisms stay together as a single unit. This association is called a lichen and is an example of a symbiotic relationship where the fungus gets regular food supply from the alga and the alga gets protection from UV rays of the sun. You will learn more about all kinds of fungi later in our curriculum. For today, let us understand a few broad details about fungi. The microscopic structures of fungi Hyphae are the thread-like structures by which the fungus spreads on a surface. A group of hyphae is called mycelium, its plural is mycelia. Under an advanced microscope, hyphae can be seen as distinct compartments separated by divisions known as septa. We can now visualize spherical structures within each compartment. These are the various organelles of fungi, for example the nucleus. The structures of fungi visible by the naked eye. Mycelia are usually visible to the human eye in the form of fungal growth on damp surfaces and spoiled food items. When grown in biology labs, mycelia are called colonies. Some types of fungi have a cup-shaped fruiting body. Within these fruiting bodies lies the hymenium that has spores within it. 
you must have seen mushrooms growing on tree barks and on damp ground. Mushrooms are fungi with really big fruiting bodies. You should ask your parents to show you an edible mushroom and you will be able to see its fruiting body very closely. Fungal spores are one of the means by which fungi reproduce and multiply. The different colours of different moulds are due to their differently coloured spores. Fungi have special mechanisms by which they disperse their spores. You will learn more about these mechanisms later in your curriculum. In the activity you performed today, you let black bread mould grow on a slice of bread. This apparently simple step can be used to understand some core fundamentals behind food spoilage. Bread is a nutritious and tasty food item. It has all the essential components that are required for growth of microorganisms. However, mold grows more quickly than bacteria on bread because mold requires much less water to grow. Since bread contains less water than other food sources, mold is able to grow on it. The amount of water that is available in a food item to support the growth of microorganisms and allow chemical reactions is known as water activity. Since the water activity in baked products and confectionery items like jams and marmalades is low, they have a higher chance of getting spoiled by mold than by bacteria. The black bread mold that you saw had thread-like structures each with a spherical head. The thread-like structures are known as sporangiophores and the spherical head is known as sporangium. Each sporangium contains spores that are dispersed and eventually land on other food items. Different fungi have different colours because their spores are differently coloured. Although many fungi cause diseases in plants and animals, many others are extremely useful for humans. Some of their uses are outlined here. As discussed earlier, many fungi yield antibiotics that are useful for fighting many infections in humans and animals. Some fungi are an inseparable component of many cuisines. Edible mushrooms are yummy ingredients of many dishes, while some other fungi are used to add flavour to certain kinds of cheese. Certain types of fungi that infect only pests are used as biological pesticides and sprayed on crops. Some fungi are excellent research tools for biologists and are used for their experiments. After performing this activity, we hope that you have understood the basic features of fungi. A detailed knowledge about different kinds of fungi is possible because of advanced microscopes that allow us to study their tiny structures in detail. A study of fungi is important because these organisms have a lot of impact on humans. So the next time you pop an antibiotic pill to get rid of your infection and fever, or have to look at some nasty mouldy bread or vegetables you forgot about, or crunch on a luscious piece of mushroom in your soup, curry or pizza, think about these remarkable organisms that behave like plants, animals and bacteria at the same time and make this living planet all the more exciting and interesting. Goodbye.